Hello again, you're watching Curtin Road Junction. Uh, can I first apologise for not posting for a while? Uh, some of you know my father wasn't very well and uh, unfortunately he passed away a fortnight ago. So the last month or so has been very, very hard for us. Um, so I haven't really done very, very much to the layout um, for obvious reasons. However, what I have done to the layout as I changed, uh, I changed the junction. I said I was going to change the junction, and I did change it. And I think I like it more. It's more practical now. Uh, as you can see, wait, this class twenty-five goes over it. There we go. It's a lot better now. A lot more practical. Like a signalman's nightmare, but. A lot more functionality, I can run trains a lot better. Um, allows access to the station and it allows trains to keep running. And uh, also allows access to the TMD and oil depot while trains are running. So I'm actually quite happy with it now. A lot happier than what I was before. Um, I just it just didn't look right before. Uh, so it's really transformed it. Um, there's, there's class 25 wagons in the road. <laughs> um, Alright, so we come up the junction now with the station past there and there's a point for the TMD, that one's for the oil depot which I'm going to extend as well, I'll explain that in a second. And it comes round there and eventually it goes back to a single track, back to its branch line status, you know. Uh, so that well, that track work's done now. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Uh, I've got a lot of point marks to fit, colour light signals to, to put, uh, um, and then I can start ballasting. Uh, the TMD I'm going to slightly change as well. I'm going to have another track running along the side of here, and I might have a, a wee siding coming off just for the shunter to sit in, just like I you know that station pilot. Uh, so that's the plan with this. Uh, I've managed to get that chipped, DCC chip. That was an absolute pain because there ain't a lot of room in these things. And I also managed to get my Class 128 DPU chipped. Uh, it's a very nice model, that. Very nice model. Very heavy model. But it's good though. The detail on it is absolutely fantastic. Um, so because of what's happened, as you can see, like I said, that's all I've done to the layout. Um, same trains are still on it because obviously it's never had time, never been in here. Actually, it's been neglected, but for a good cause. Um, so I'll tell you what my plans are for next because I will be updating a lot more. Uh, I'd like to also say hello to all my new subscribers. Thanks for subscribing, uh, much appreciated. Um, so there will be more updates to come. Um, a lot more more frequently, I meant. So what I'm gonna do over here, this is the lift out section. Now, this is an absolute pain because obviously it's covering the door. If I need the toilet, I've got to take all this off. Uh, I was originally going to put copper clad in here, but I've got it, I've got it all connected in now with fish plates. So I slide the fish plates back uh, and do the snibs and plug the wire underneath the bus wire and lift it up. And that's, that's then I've got to stop, you know. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this door off. Now, I'm either going to have the door open and out the way, or I'm going to have the, you know, one of these sliding partition doors. Um, they, they're not very great, but it's, it's a door in it. And that way I can leave this in place all the time, just means I want to crawl underneath. I can leave this in place all the time, so I'm quite, quite happy with that uh, plan. So that's how that's going to be, and it'll also allow me to extend this oil depot back into this area here, and give me a bit more scenic and a bit more going on, and so I look forward to that. So uh, this retaining wall that's to come along here will obviously continue along here. So it gets to about then it gets to about the end there. 
and once I've done that, uh, this whole bit will be scenic then. Um, the town scene will still stop here, but it'll just be a retaining wall along here, just there, so you can't see that bit at the back. Um, and obviously, that, the two tracks will still be hidden, you know, the three will be hidden, and I'll get this board put in here for the town scene so I can start finishing off the station, get the retaining walls in, and get the retaining walls along here. Uh, this corner here, I'm going to put like a, a rock face round where the track is, then it'll be like a hillside going up, um, some trees and that, and some farm animals, or still be a little bit of another sort of like sneak break, you know, just something different from a town scene. Um, haven't done anything at the ballast yard, I'll still going to extend this board a little bit here, um, but that'll come you know, when I get to it, and just, I have made a few purchases, uh, while I've been sat about, uh, I bought this. It's a limited edition class 47 from Kernel Motor Rail Centre, and uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I love this livery. It was, I mean, it was only decorated as a as an advertisement um, for all the railway crime in its time. But it was it was owned by Virgin Trains, uh, hence why I bought these uh, five of them. Mark to ease with lights. I'm not very impressed with these. Uh, I've had the brake van out, and when the light's on and it's really dark, the the light bleeds through the red, and I didn't think that was very nice. I'm going to have to paint the inside of the coaches to stop that. Uh, it's a shame, really, because they're actually quite nice coaches. But never mind. Um, so just if anybody's buying these, and uh, just beware that the light bleeds through this red here. It's just as it's a pain. Uh, so I bought these. I also bought these uh, GNA Falcon wagons. I know, I know, I know. My error, my main error, is 1980s. Uh, however, I have got a substantial amount of present day stock as well. Uh, as you'll see by my other two purchases, which was Network Rail Class 31. Uh, and I voucher for eBay, so I thought I would just spend it. And I also bought the Backman Class 47, the Network South East livery. This is the latest one, Kingsland. I absolutely love this livery. Beautiful livery. Uh, so crisp, so bright, it's just it's, 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 it's lovely. So I've still got these locomotives to chip as well. Um, so that's my purchases for the month. Uh, the last six weeks, I think. Total, um, but other than that, that's about it for this this update. Um, sorry, I can't show you more, but just you will see the layout start to change now. Um, I'll start getting in there and get more done and start getting on with it. Try to get some of the scenery put in and. You know, Trying to get the electrics done. I think I'll tackle the. Well, I'm going to tackle the TMD track work next. Because uh, I'm going to change the track work. And I've also got to put an inspection pit inside here. Uh, you'll notice that these have moved back about four inches. Uh, four or five inches. This is where it used to be. But I had to move them back. Same with that. Because there's a button under here. And it goes through. And it's. Uh, I couldn't get an inspection pit. I'd have to move that back a wee bit, but I thought I'd give it more room. More locals can sit in the side and outside, you know, the shed. Uh, I'm also thinking about putting some sort of like shed over the, the fueling point, but it'll just be like a corrugated, uh, you know, like H beams corrugated with lights in it, just to cover uh, end one end of the the fueling point. So. That's another plan. Every time I look at this, I come up with new ideas. Uh, but it's just trying to get the ideas into place. Uh, it's not easy. So, but that's that's about it for this update. Um, I will be posting more updates uh, more frequently. Uh, and you will see the layout start to come on. Um, I've still got quite a lot of work to do. Um, still got... Uh, 
I've still got sound to put in my class 101 um, and I've got a sound chip to put in class 20s. These locals here are getting chipped. Uh, the Hornby one is actually a TTS class 40, it's in green, but I'm going to take the sound chip out of it and I'm going to put it into my Bachman class 40 um, and just sell the, the, the green class 40 on uh, the Hornby one. And I've got a Helgen class 26, a Helgen class 27, and I've got a Helgen class 33, they're all to be chipped. Um, and as you see in the bottom, my Rapido trains, APTA, <laughs> it's never left its box yet. Uh, I think I, after seeing everybody's videos on um, YouTube, I'm beginning to think I'm the only one that's bought a DCC uh, ready version. Everybody else seems to have bought the sound. I wish I bought the sound now, but never mind. Uh, but I've got to chip it, so I was a bit curious, wondering what chip to use in it. And I read their booklet, and they, they recommended the ESU chip, the uh, lock pilot. So I've got that for it. So hopefully, we'll see the APTE running soon as well. And um, there's all my other decoders that's to go in locos, and well, quite a lot of stuff to do. Let's just try to get time to do it all. Um, but I will get some more. Oh, I keep forgetting. Uh, this is for, um, I was using this to run in um, a Flying Scotsman there. Flying Scotsman was my dad's favourite locomotive. Uh, it's the one he always mentioned, always talked about. So I'm going to have a wee running session with the Flying Scotsman as a wee tribute to my, to my, my father. Because um, I think he would have liked that. So it's been running, it's not been chipped yet, but that's what I'm saying. I've run it in with this uh, using my Gage Master Model D. Um, that's got a 12 volt output on the back of it as well, which will be handy for uh, like lighting and things like that. Uh, so there you have it. That's, uh, I think that's about all for this month. Uh, try to think if there's anything else I've missed. I'm going to put a service track up here for my Dynamis because these Gage Master um, these Gage Master decoders they can't be programmed on the main they can only be programmed on a service track so I'm just going to put a length of flexor track just down here because uh, my workbench is here uh, and I'll uh, get my well there's my Dynamis system there and there's the Pro Box they'll go together I'm going to put them here uh, on a wee shelf and I've got another um, infrared sensor with the Pro Box which will go here and obviously the other one will be on top of the Dynamis set which will be over there um, so that will give me a bit more I might actually buy another one and stick it in this corner because the problem is with the wireless as soon as you turn your back on it the trains just stop uh, if it's not got a clear signal to the it's not got a clear signal, it just, it just won't work. It's absolutely a pain. So, I'll leave it this. This, this is a, I'll leave it at this. Um, and I'll see you all again soon. Uh, and hopefully we'll see a bit more happening on the way out. Okay, doke. Right, ta for now then. And thanks for watching.